what do we mean by value or with the statement or the concepts that are coming out that value to us would be understandable by in hard terms or some definition of what we are able to put out there versus what we are able to get in exchange for it it could be money it could be recognition it could be anything but is that what we understand by value i feel valued when there is some sort of a recognition when there is a difference made to another person's life and he or she acknowledges it when i do something and i feel joy as a result of having made that difference to another person's life when there is a benefit that i get as a result of helping someone that benefit could be monetary or non monetary but i need to get something that could be recognition so these are the things that need to happen for me to feel valued right now remember these statements go in your group and i want you to specifically discuss what's the danger in treating value like this why person. is my motivation or why is my expansion dependent on other people in the same manner why is my contraction dependent on other people why is my sense of belongingness dependent on other people why is my sense of depression or anxiety dependent on other people let's say we are constantly from our childhood raised in a manner where we are almost taught to compare on everything right that he is better than you or he knows more than you or she knows more than you the whole sense of competition comes from comparison and obviously uh, because it's coming from comparison and because it's in sense of achievement that we were talking about a while earlier then value is also a matter of comparison whether this one is it's not about recognition it's not about salary it's about how you are comparing with others is it at the top tier when nidhi you were asking a question around pricing it's obviously coming that how do i value myself more because i'm adding more value than others or i believe that i am a better coach so it it it, it exists in com- it exists in comparison our notion of success itself right our notion of what we achieve or what we get or what our careers are or what our relationships are or the kind of houses that we live in or societies or countries or whatever it is it has value only if it's compared otherwise there is no value or there is no perception of value itself it exists because there is a perception of comparison and what what causes this comparison is of course the way that we are brought up the way our knowledge structure is built the way our belief structure is built uh the way the upbringing is so it almost becomes a mindset that you are conditionally by design taught to compare that you have to come first second third or you have to do this much or you have to get a job or you have to go to iit or it's just struggle to get into a college it's a struggle to get into a university and the root of it all is based in some sort of a comparison where we are constantly being taught to compare so whether i want to be better than so and so or i want to be better than my own self is also a comparison i want to achieve more than someone else is a comparison i want to have a better life is a comparison i want to have more money is a comparison i want to have more joy is a comparison i want to have more spirituality is a comparison everything the goals can be different depending on which stage you are in life but the essence of it is in comparison and you could be comparing two factors of your own life in the past i was like this now i want more than that right now everything in that comparison we have learned in our thoughts to separate ourselves from the rest right by comparison is also a separation right that i am one person and then the world is separate from me and in that comparison i have to succeed or not succeed so there is no sense of uh there is no sense of wholeness in the comparison right you are one person who the world is out against and you have to so there is no sense of wholeness whereas if you related to nature there is no comparison so the tree is not comparing with another tree for space or for size or something there is a sense of wholeness which we don't have and in this comparison or separation we always have a problem to solve right i'm not getting value i'm not getting recognized or i might have something lesser i want something more and in this comparison of opposites that someone else is better than me it could be country wise china is better than me us is better than me developed nations are better than me in that there is always a problem to solve and that problem to solve is always of a catch up that i have to get to a certain level i have to 
raise my, uh, and not just about hard things, even about soft things. I have to raise my fitness to another level. I have to raise my standard of life. I have to raise my emotional level. I have to raise my knowledge. I have to raise my spiritual connect. I have to raise my religious connect, whatever it is. It's always going to be a catch up to something. And that catch up happens because we create an opposite of reality. Right? For example, the reality might be I'm feeling sad and we will create an opposite called happiness and that happiness has to be caught on to. Right? I'm not dealing with the sadness. I'm aspiring to be happy. I might be depressed. I don't want to deal with the depressed state of mind. I want to create an opposite, which is an idea. I have certain amount of money. Let's say you have 25 lakhs in your bank account. You will create an opposite idea that that based on whatever reading or knowledge that the possibility is there. So let's have that much. So that opposite becomes an ideal. And that's the way the function of this capitalist economy or the capitalist world is that it's never going to be enough. And we always have an opposite that's ideal. And that opposite has the value. Right? That opposite represents value. What you have is not valuable. But that opposite represents the value because it's going to give you something that we currently don't have. And throughout centuries, uh, at least the last 5,000 years of human documented history, this is the psychological reality for everyone. Opposite has the value. Opposite is always better. Grass is greener on the other side. And in that manner, there is no freedom. Right? Because your action is always rooted in an opposite existence or our action is always rooted in a sense of comparison and there is no freedom. This is this is like a compulsion because this is a mental conditioning that I have been born and brought up like that and therefore this is the way to live or this is something to be chastened, this is something to chase, this is when I will feel successful, this is when I will feel validated, this is when I will feel recognized, this is when I will feel joy, this is when I will get value. And in a very examination manner, if you look at what's happening in the world and everyone's living like that, what has it created? In the present, someone was talking about living in the moment a while ago. In the present moment, what has it created? In the present moment, is it, it's ensured that we don't have joy. In the present moment, it ensures that, that you don't feel value. In the present moment, it ensures that in comparison to someone else, you're always feeling small. So in the present moment, that's a very irresponsible way to live in so far as your relationship with yourself is concerned, right? That it's never enough, it's never complete, it's never joyful, it's never complete of value, it's never fulfilling because there is always an opposite that is better. And in that irresponsibility, so to say, there is absolutely no freedom. And there is no freedom because the opposite of freedom is the word called dependence, right? Freedom is independence. So the opposite of a word of freedom is dependence. Our sense of fulfillment, value, joy, success, money, achievement is always dependent on something or the other as to how they are perceiving us or in competing with something or the other. And in that dependence, we find escapes. We might escape it by going to a temple and fasting for seven days or we might escape it by taking a holiday for seven days. The mechanism is the same. In the dependence, we find escapes, but that escape is still not the freedom because we come back to the same life. Right? The only way to actually experience the freedom is to be able to negate the dependence. Why do I need validation from another person? You don't. And that's freedom. Right? Why do I need joy from you? For it? I don't need joy from you. Right? Joy is not something that you can give me anyway. You can be alone in a mountain staring at a river being in absolute silence with no one around you, that's a moment of complete joy. That's a moment of complete wholeness, right? Everyone's experienced it. You can be in front of a mountain or in a river that you've seen for the first time. The magnitude of nature is a pure moment of joy where there is no comparison. The moment you will compare it with another scenery, that's the end of the joy. You are out of that moment. Right? So in a very holistic sense, free... Freedom means what? That you have to be able to negate all these societal things, expectations, burdens, dependencies, and you are free. And if you are free, it ceases to matter. And if it ceases to matter, you don't need value from anyone else right now. We are constantly worrying about, for example, just to take Nidhi, your example forward, we are worrying about getting value or getting paid to a certain amount. 
Whereas the joy for you in your work is to be giving that value. That's what you love doing, right? If you keep giving it, no one can stop the getting from you. So why not go there every day and yeah, do it for 10 people free and so what? Like in the lockdown, we couldn't get paid for our work. In, I'm talking about me and Roli and our team and stuff. We did it for free. As a result of which people eventually started paying us. But we weren't worried about that we will get paid or not. We were doing it because we can no longer do our work and we love to do our work. So let's keep doing it. Right? Freedom is not... Be Why should my sense of value be dependent on what, let's say, uh, Saket thinks of me? Why should it be? I don't care. I'm doing... Why should my sense of worth be dependent on whether you... It, and, and both ways. It's not whether they think highly of you or whether they think poorly of you. Either shouldn't matter. That's when it's freedom. Now, when it matters, if, me, if it matters to me what Saket thinks of me, then Saket controls. Right? If it matters to me what my boss thinks of me, then my boss controls me. If it matters to me what my company thinks of me, my company controls me. If it matters, that, that's where that's dependent. So I'm not saying that it's not reality. Of course, your salary depends on your company and your country and your tax structure and all of that. That's separate. At a psychological level, it doesn't depend. At a very logic level also, yes, your salary depends on this company, but this company, you'll kick it tomorrow and it will depend on another company. So the dependence keeps moving from one entity to one person to another. But what we are questioning is, why should you emotionally depend on anything? Value is your intrinsic worth. The question of worth, whether intrinsic or extrinsic, exists only in comparison. Why should I compare myself with anyone? Now, you might say that, yeah, I'll get feedback and I want to be better. Who says you have to be better? You are good enough. And if you are not comparing and you are freeing your mind space, that whole lot of burden that exists in the mind currently, and you are freeing that up from comparison, you have a lot of energy free to actually perceive what's happening in the world. You don't need to be better than anyone. You just need to perceive what's happening and act accordingly. And that's all the intelligence that's needed. Not for comparison. Dependence at a physical level, yes, it's our need that we are dependent on people. But at an emotional, psychological level, it's a creative thing. If you see through it, you are free. If you don't see through it, you'll be dependent. Why should my sense of worth as a parent be dependent on what my neighbors think of me for the time? To hell with that. I know what I'm doing. As long as I'm fine with that, I'm fine with that. It's, and in that freedom, therefore, when you are not dependent on anyone psychologically, that's kind of a state of total responsibility. Because you are not paying attention to others, you'll have to pay attention to your own action. So it's not that that freedom is irresponsibility. I don't care about you, and I don't. You are recognizing your dependence, and that's where the, there is total responsibility. You're choosing not to get guided by it, but because you have that present moment attention, people live responsibly in that manner. So it's not to say that I become reckless in that freedom. On the contrary, you become responsible. You're reckless in comparison. You, you do reckless things when you are comparing. You do people cheat when they're comparing. People fight wars when they're comparing. There is violence when there is comparison. When there's freedom, there is. If I don't compare myself with my neighbor or my friend or my boss, there is no jealousy. If you compare, then all sorts of things come into the picture. Right? We spoke speaking about getting value at the beginning of this session. If you're not comparing, the question only remains about giving value. The question about getting dissipates. You will get, that's a law of nature, that, that you can't escape it. Right? As you sow, you will reap. If you're giving value, you will get it. No one can stop it. Someone or the other will take notice. But in my intent of getting value, what takes a back seat is giving value. And what gives you joy is giving value. It's not getting value. It's a confusion in our heads that I will feel joy when I get paid one lakh an hour. It's not, it's not true. You will get joy if you reach one lakh people. Whether you get paid or not. If you make a difference to one lakh people, there'll be more joy than one person paying you one lakh. And you know it internally. And if you do reach that one lakh people, that one lakh monetary value will come in here.
And Saket raised an important point earlier that when I compare, I'm setting the bar. That's a very logical thing. Whoever you are, you could be comparing it to yourself to Bill Gates or Warren Buffet for all I care. But that's it. You will not go further than that. So why compare? We compare us. Can I be better than better version of myself? Your past self is dead. Wo hoga. Why compare yourself to something that's dead? Yesterday is over. So why compare myself to a dead person anyway? The past moment is over. And again, when I'm talking about better being better than myself, it's again to get something from outside so that other, it's the same thing, just like a different prison with a different door, with a better view, but it's, just, it's still not freedom. So can we examine that in our own self and actually psychologically as an internal process, be able to negate the dependence itself because freedom is again an opposite reality. It doesn't exist today. What exists today is dependence. So all we have to do is question the dependence, not the freedom. The end of dependence is automatically the freedom. Right? I don't want to create another ideal. Now I have something to strive for. There's nothing to strive for. The end at an emotional, mental level of this feeling of dependence is the beginning of freedom. There's nothing to do. All you have to do is look within, question your dependence and end it. Not physically cut roots, but emotionally, my well-being doesn't depend on what Roli thinks of me. And if I can negate yes, that sir. within me, that's freedom. Yes, sir. So the end of seeking value right now, there is nothing called value that I'm going to get because I don't know where it is. It's an idea of opposite. The end of seeking it is the beginning of getting it. The end of dependence is the beginning of freedom. The end of seeking it from outside, the end of seeking value from outside is the beginning of valuing yourself. Right? Because you don't need it anymore. So it means you're complete. The end of seeking spirituality is actually the beginning of it. If you're seeking it, you're not getting it. The end of seeking God is the beginning of it. The end of, what well, I could go on with controversial things, I don't want to. But but that, that's really true because right now we're chasing the opposite of what we have. I am chasing these gurus or whatever because I don't have it. I'm chasing a spiritual end result because I don't have it. End what you don't have. That's the beginning of what you what you want. Right? If the teachers or teachings of other people could make the world spiritual, then 5,000 years was enough to have done that. But it's not happened. So it's not going to come that way. You can fool yourself into thinking that you have become that way, but then you can might as well fool yourself into anything. So I think the point I'm trying to make is we are living in these opposite ideals. What you have is reality. What you don't have is not reality. That's fantasy. Deal with what is in you. The behavior of seeking validation from other is reality, right? That validation is not reality because it's not existing right now. So can I cut my dependence on what is and then see whether the rest, the next is needed also? I have more salary than I have today. What I have is my reality. I want is not the reality, right? I want more income, then you have to take certain action. What you don't have is what you don't have. Why, why get into that? Whether it's a physical thing, whether it's an emotional thing, an emotional thing, it becomes far easier. End of sadness is joy. It's not that you have to get joy, which will end that. End of anger is peace. It's not that you will get peace and then anger will go away. So what you have is what you've got to deal with. So what we have in the context of this conversation is dependence. End of dependence is freedom. It's not that freedom will come in independence. So... If the world is violent, end of violence is non-violent. There's nothing called non-violent behavior will come and end violence. Because violence is reality. That psychology, they've written about it. There's nothing called behave non-violently. There's nothing called behave non-violently. It's just don't be violent. So don't be violent is non-violence. It's not that something will come and end it. To add to that, I think we understand change also incorrectly. That something has to be done. The ending is the change. Change yeah. has already happened the moment you... The moment you stop smoking, it's changed, right? The moment you end up behaving, the change, what you will come, we don't have to predict because we can't. 
we are busy predicting what will i change it with that that's something that you are no that's again the opposite ideal what we really need to understand the ending itself is the beginning of the change what that change will manifest we'll know when we end we can't predict it only when i st- let's say i'm eating sugars and now i want to predict what will happen when i stop eating sugar when you stop it you'll know anyway no? so what's there to, what's the curiosity about so it's like first show me what's on the other side then i will decide whether to end it or not and in that there is only manipulation first Strange. first show me what's on the other side then i will decide whether to make the change or not is the business model of an ashram it's not real it's not it's not it doesn't happen no one can show you what's on the other side no one can predict the future 